from Dan C. Uh, I'm a UK based NBA fan and have been listening to the pod for the last few years. I still don't have an NBA team to follow. Help me out. Who should I follow? And Seth, like you, you said before we started, this is perfect because it's the opposite of how it normally goes. Yeah, no, usually there's been a, for I want to say about 20 years almost, it's been a, wow, I'm just getting into soccer. Help me pick a Premier League team. I do think it is a little bit of a harder question because soccer clubs have a little bit more of a sort of a persistent character for the most part than NBA teams do. Uh, just the the regionalism of of soccer teams and also the the promotion relegation system and just how sort of stratified it is so i mean aside from like we're not going to tell you to be a lakers fan like aside from being a lakers fan there isn't like a team that is sort of in the same spot at all times so it's a little bit of uh you might pick a team for a reason and then in, in five years the team's identity will be completely different uh, but that's okay. We're not, we're not, uh, I don't think we're, we're fan like, uh, uh, fundamentalists here about right. telling you how you can be a fan of a team. So if you're picking a team to follow this year, I think is, or for the next couple of years, I think that's the best way to take the question. This is, this is actually a great year to pick a team. Cause I think you have a lot of options across the board. I think you have, you can go anywhere from Oklahoma city you can go Indiana, young teams. Like I, my view of it is, pick a young team that's fun and up and coming. And I think the best team to do that with is actually the Orlando Magic. I think they're just a lot of fun. I think they're on the cusp of of being a playing maybe playoff team. I think you're having a lot more stuff there. I think you have Paolo Banchero, Franz Wagner. Those two just kind of as your cornerstones right now are, you know, really fun guys to root for. I think ultimately, like if I was picking a team and I was this fan in, in the UK, I think I'd go with the Orlando Magic just for the fear fact of like, this is a young, fun team, vibes well. They I like their coach. I like Jamal Mosley. I think they have a lot of spirit there. Oklahoma City, also very fun. Also easy. You know, it's 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 probably the last year to jump on the Oklahoma city bandwagon. Like you're probably like doing the scene in the movies where you're chasing the, the wagon and making an amazing leap to catch on to it. But uh, I think the, uh, I think those are probably the two teams and I throw Indiana as maybe the, the third place team, but I think fun young teams need to be who you're thinking about and to grow with. And I think this is, this is a good spot. I would go with Orlando. I think a UK fan definitely stick to the East coast. Because if you're going to go visit, um, it makes it easy to visit if you're going to go see some games. Uh, the one thing you have to worry about with Orlando, and I know English folks love Orlando and Disney World and all that. So maybe you just combine it all if, you, if you're a lover of that stuff. But that team may not be like even halfway decent in like two years. They don't have a good track record of success. So I would say you have to weigh the... Young and fun versus the how miserable do I want to be eight years from now when I'm rooting for this team? I think that that's where I lean more toward like the Boston Celtics, the more traditional teams that that stay kind of in the mix. And it, it really is about that trade off. It's do you want to root for Manchester United? You know, that'd be like the Boston Celtics or Manchester City. Or do you want to root for Newcastle? Uh, which like I did, and then we got new ownership, right? Like, so you, you, maybe you root for the Orlando magic. They're young and fun and you're rooting for new ownership that actually keeps them consistent. I don't know, but the Orlando magic right now have, if you're just looking for young and fun, they've got a good young defense, which is crazy. I think that's a pretty good choice. Atlanta is also not an awful choice. Trey Young's a fun guy to watch. Seth. <laughs> no, I so I, this is I, I love this question and and it's funny you said Newcastle because the other like the standard answer is is always been like oh Tottenham uh because sure. they they've sort of been in the same like entertaining team a tradition of being an entertaining team and and sort of good location and just need a little bit of a tweak and and then they get you know they this year up until they got some injuries and stuff had been you know one of the two best two or three best teams in the league uh with a new manager anyway enough soccer um i i think of these teams just from a let's watch this team and, and watch them progress i think oklahoma city is the closest to sort of a a fully formed team 
and would probably be the most satisfying over the next year or two. Indiana is tons of fun. Indiana is a great like drop in and watch, but they don't play any defense. And so you just, there's a, there's sort of a, a ceiling on achievement. I think they're as good as they is, as great as Tyrese Halliburton is. Um, we are probably going to in, in the new year, probably going to start debating which, not just weather, but which all NBA team he's going to end up on this year. Uh, and Orlando is a little bit the reverse. And they see mentioned the good defense, but their guard play is if you combine those teams, like, you know, do a merger and somehow get Halliburton throwing the ball to Ben Caro. Right. Uh, so that's why I would go with Oklahoma city. Um, I, I'm, I think it's too late on Oklahoma city. Mm. I just think like you, you didn't survive the, you didn't, you're coming in now after the two years where they were just miserable and, and you know, like the, the team was rough and tanking and all of that stuff. I feel like with Orlando, like you say it with the guard play, they're just a guard away. Like, it's not like, and it's not even a massive one. I've said it many times. Like, that's who I want to see Malcolm Brogdon land. Like, that's where I, that, like, they're not far off in that sense. I mean, they're one guy setting the table for everybody away from being really, really freaking good. And I want to push back on Dave saying like, you know, the track record in two years from now and whatnot. This is, they've changed. Like they actually made the smart moves when they traded Aaron Gordon, when they traded Vucevic, uh, you know, like they, they've actually look how much better off they are than the bulls in the trade that they made, you know? And I think that's a massive win for them. And I think those are the things I'm looking at with them. And I just think when you're starting out as a young, as, as a fan joining a team, I think this is the perfect starting point to jump in with them. I think, like I said, okay, see, it's a little bit late to me. Indiana's fun. I just don't know how sustainable it is when you score 157, but give up 152. Like there's a, a <laughs> level of like, you know, and it feels like a nightly basis. Yeah. Um, it's not, but when you have an amazing offense and a God awful defense, it's like, ah, what are we doing?